What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Kados Mine Graphics module. And this is one of the modules for their Kados Mine Mini PC that I was really, really wanting to get my hands on at the time of launch. Mainly because when it comes down to it, this allows us to turn this super small form factor thin mini PC here into a full fledged gaming PC. This is the Kados Mine and I've done a couple videos on it. Uh, if you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave some links in the description. And at the time of release, this was touted as a next-gen modular mini PC or workstation, and all by itself, it actually performs really well. We've got a 12-core CPU up to 5 gigahertz, but the built-in iGPU did leave a little more to be desired. But that's about the change with the all-new Mine graphics. Basically, what we've got here is a detachable NVIDIA RTX 4060 Ti. It also has built-in speakers, full-size SD card slot, a built-in fingerprint reader, volume control, and it adds a lot of I.O. to the Mine Mini PC itself. Another cool thing about this unit is that it can be used with other devices over Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. So for handhelds, you could actually just plug this right in and you've got an RTX 4060 Ti ready to go. Now again, if you're interested in checking out the Mind all by itself with that 12 core CPU and it's built in iGPU, I'll leave some links in the description to a couple videos, but this is really gonna be all about this thing connected to the Mind graphics dock. And if you take a look at the bottom of this mini PC, you might notice we've got this slot here and this is known as the Mind link. That's exactly how we're gonna be connecting it to the Mind graphics dock. Basically, we can plug it right into the top of the unit. Then in turn, we've got access to that RTX 4060 Ti. It's also gonna power up the Mind Mini PC and we've got access to all of the IO built in here. And speaking of IO, up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB 4, which is also compatible with Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. If we wanna connect this to a different device, we can do it with this port here. Plus up front, we've got a full size SD card reader. Over here on the right side, there's not much going on, but over here on the left side, we've got our volume control and our fingerprint sensor, which is gonna allow us to log into our operating system super quickly. And of course, around back, we've got our power input. The uh, power supply is actually internal, so we just need the cord from the wall to the unit itself. Two full-size HDMI ports. We've also got a display port and three USB 3.2 ports. So yeah, taking a look at the back of the Mind Mini PC, this is definitely gonna add a lot of IO. Plus, it has a built-in far-field microphone array and a built-in speaker. I'll tell you, with all of the monitors I own, that speaker is much louder and it's definitely got some deep bass to it. I was pretty surprised by it. So again, you can use the Mind all by itself. We've got a super small form factor, 12 cores coming from that i7-1360P. This one has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. It's also got a built-in battery that'll allow up to 25 hours of sleep. So you can actually just put the unit to sleep, throw it in your pocket, and when it's time to plug it back in, you're gonna be right where you left off. But with the new Mine Graphics dock, this is really gonna unlock the gaming performance. And basically all we need to do here is plug it into the top, boot the unit up, we'll get right into our operating system. And for this video, I'm running Windows 11 Pro, but I'm pretty sure that they have full Linux support on Mine Graphics right now. So if you did wanna install something like Ubuntu, you could definitely do it. And before, without the graphics dock attached, you could play games on this. It would run Skyrim at a lower resolution. It's got the XE graphics built in, but now instead of using that, we've got an RTX 4060 Ti, eight gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, and uh, before we move into the operating system, get a better look at everything, I wanted to show you at least one game running up front and then we'll test some more down the road. Right now, we've got Forza Motorsports running at 1440p, high settings, and I do have DLSS enabled. It's actually set to quality right now. Either way, it still looks amazing at 1440p and we're getting over 100 FPS on this system. Most of the time, when we see these all-in-one eGPUs, they're using mobile GPUs inside. So we've got lower TGPs, but with Mine Graphics, this is actually a full-fledged 160 watt RTX 4060 Ti with eight gigs of VRAM. So we're not losing out over there, going to a laptop variant or anything like that. We've got a desktop card in this unit. And I've got Afterburner installed. Right now, I'm not doing any kind of overclocking or anything like that, but yeah, we can raise the power limit up, we can change the fan speed, and we can overclock memory and core clock on this unit if you really wanted to get down and do it. So yeah, once we have the Mine graphics dock connected, you can see, I mean, we've still got that i7-1360P. This unit had 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5200, but instead of using the built-in Intel graphics, 
we've now got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti with 8 gigs of ddr 6 VRAM. And ever since my initial review of the Mind, uh, they have kept up to date. They've actually got the new Mind software, which is really great for a little mini PC like this. You can see we've got our device info right here. We've also got our device mode when unplugged because we do have that built-in battery. So it'll go right to sleep. You can hibernate or we can just use battery. The battery in here isn't gonna last that long when you're using the battery, but it can sleep up to 25 hours on that battery. That way, once you plug it back in, hit the power button, you're right where you left off. Smart charging, I've got this on. It'll only take that battery up to 80%. Driver updates. So we can actually check directly from here. It'll scan all of our important drivers, give us an update if it's there. And down here, you see we've got the Mine Graphics attached. Firmware version, 1.01, .01, product details, and we can change the color of the indicator light on the front of the unit. One of the main things I wanted to check out with the new Mine Graphics dock was what kind of speed this thing's running at. And we've got a pretty decent GPU given the form factor of this little mini PC here. I know it's only the RTX 4060 Ti, but this thing can still game better than the uh, built-in graphics. We'll do a render test. The GPU itself does support PCIe X8 4.0, but it's running at X4 4.0. So we are gonna lose just a bit, but I'll tell you what, I mean, it really doesn't seem like we did. Let me run Furmark real quick. I'll show you what kind of TGP this thing's running at. Right up here, we've got our GPU power, and this thing does go up to around 168 watts in some cases. So yeah, I do think we're gonna see some pretty good performance out of this little machine with the Mine Graphics attached. Before we get into some more gaming, I did wanna give you a look at a few of these GPU benchmarks that I ran, just using 3D Mark, and the first one we have here is Firestrike, 23,548. And I also ran Time Spy just to see what we're hitting here, coming in with a respectable 12,650. So yeah, taking a look at just the graphics score through both of these, we're not working with the laptop variant. This is maxing out at 160 watts, so we are getting a nice performance bump there. Now I wanted to check out a little more gaming, and one of my favorite things about these RTX 4000 series cards is frame generation. Right now we've got it turned off, but we will enable it in just a second. Right now we're at 1440p high with DLSS set to auto. Not bad, and it's really playable like this, but I do see it dip down every once in a while into the lower 70s. So I think frame gen is something that's really gonna help out here. On average, we're seeing around 86 with it set up like this. But as soon as I enable frame gen, I'm now seeing an average of 119 FPS. Pretty decent jump there. It's actually not as much as I thought it would be given that I've tested it quite a bit on different systems. Either way, it is working. We're getting a really high frame rate here on this mini PC. And if you take a look in the top left hand corner, you can see those GPU temps are also really low. This thing isn't spinning up, sounding like a jet engine or anything like that. It does stay nice, cool, and quiet. Next up, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. I wasn't sure how well this would perform maxed out at 1440p with no frame gen, but with DLSS enabled set to balance at 1440p very high, we're getting an average of 92 FPS. And this game does look really good. If you're into Ratchet and & Clank and you haven't played it on PC maxed out, definitely need to try it. Spider-Man Remastered. Now we don't need frame gen for this. We can actually get averages in the 90s, but I just wanted to see how high we could take it. And at very high 1440 with just frame gen on, we're seeing an average of 152 FPS with this game. There are games out there that just work really well with uh, NVIDIA's frame gen and even AMD's new frame gen technology. And you know, on a lower powered system like this, it really, really helps out. This is the final one I wanted to test. We're at 1440p, very high with frame gen on, seeing an average of around 114 FPS. And without frame gen, we're around 71. So with these Nixus games, yeah, I mean, across the board, you could definitely play these very high with a little bit of DLSS. But if you don't want to ruin that resolution by scaling it using DLSS, because after all, this game is absolutely beautiful, frame gen is a great option. Overall, really impressed with the performance here. I've been able to play every AAA game that I wanted to on this little machine now with the Mine Graphics attached. 
And remember, we can put this thing to sleep, detach the mini PC, and use the mini PC by itself with the iGPU, put it back to sleep mode. When we want a game, we can just go ahead and redock it. I like the built-in speaker. It's a lot louder than my monitor speakers for all of them that I have around right now. And yeah, I mean, it does sound pretty good. It adds a lot of extra I.O. to the Mind Mini PC, and the fact that we can actually use this with other devices over USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, or Thunderbolt 4 is pretty great. So if you'd like to see a video with a handheld connected to this, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for our first look at the Mind Graphics. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links to the official Kados website. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.